Dresses twirl, dice clatter, heirloom crystal chimes and chinks, and are surreptitiously squirreled away into handbags. A variety of fantastical avians squawk throughout the night, and dancers and would be suitors stumble into the darkness. Once again, we find ourselves around the always open and always enthusiastic table here at Reckless Attack, an often 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast and current scandalous Regency romance epic. I am once again your acclaimed and generous host, Dame Master Nathan. Around the table with the angstiest, dark pastiest, Regency romanciest folks in this corner of the internet. Dear players, hello. Welcome hey, to the Please introduce yourselves, not just as you are, but who you are in fiction and in the sub-fiction, the rich <laughs> sub-fiction that we have interlayered as if it is the inside of a delicious bonbon that we might be enjoying at such a fancy party Ooh. such as this. Starting on my right with... Hi, everyone. My name is Steve. And ordinarily, I would be playing Selv Asterlin, the dragonborn monk, who... I'm sorry, that, your Sylvester voice just made me realize, oh, your voice, your throat must be so scratchy, so that my throat got... <laughs> You're very, very aware yeah. of your human, human... <laughs> Steve that's, that's, right. that's, some, that's some serious empathy yeah, right there. Yeah. Yep, I can make other people's throats scratchy. Yeah. It's the shittiest superpower, but it is a good super... It is a superpower. And I am playing... Ordinarily, Selv Asterlin, the dragonborn monk who is currently playing Sylvester Lynn, the head butler of the Gold Tree Estate. And to my right. Hi, everyone. I'm David. And normally I play Caskrim Brightmane, a dwarven warlock, who is also currently now playing Kenjamin Brightmane. Nope. Kenjamin, what's his last name? Yeah. <laughs> Gold Tree. Gold Tree. Yeah. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Who is also now currently playing Kenjamin Gold Tree, master of the house and knickknack enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> also, I like how both of you have restarted your spiels after making jokes that we all laughed at. As if we're not just going to leave it all in. Sorry. <laughs> That's just the reality yeah. of it. Sophie, everyone's going to know that you sympathy cough. <laughs> and uh, that, that canonically, the two entities of Kaskarin and Kenjamin are now merging into it's true, one. It's true. Into the identity of me, David. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan, and I play Checkers, the Grung Druid, and his trusty frog pals, Mango and Junior. But not tonight. <laughs> not today. Not today. Today. Never again. <laughs> tonight I am playing Charity Goldtree, matriarch of the Goldtree family, and hat enthusiast. I will, <laughs> I will say, Hell yeah. 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 We got a lot of enthusiasm at right. the table. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm also vying for the award Best Dressed at the Ooh. Emerald Gala tonight with my obsidian black dress and large scale model of the Kraken. <laughs> I gotta stop you there, yeah. Jonathan. Okay. We as a podcast group and listeners, I want you to hear this too. Had to promise one another that we would limit all descriptions of what we are wearing <laughs> to like 30 seconds yeah. or less and we can't start in the intro. Okay. We just, we gotta keep we gotta keep things moving no matter how good these, these oh, descriptions see, are. Oh, see, I thought we all agreed that we would not describe our costumes at all and I, you would just say I we know. are good Looking good, attractive people going into the ball. Mm-hmm. No further we have, details. I know, but we deserve a treat too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. that could be a little. Let them describe their characters. A little treat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I maybe I spoke too harshly. <laughs> I, I like how you snuck it in in the yeah. character description. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't stop me. And to my right, hi everyone. I'm Sophie, and I normally play Valeska Carter, the human asterisk cleric of the Arcana domain. But tonight. 
I play Violet Goldtree, the daughter of Charity and Kendraman, who is looking to forge her own future as an independent woman of the Regency era. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the official title. It'll be on her business card yep. yeah. mm-hmm. moving mm-hmm. forward. Mm-hmm. Everyone, we, as, as you all have said, we are in the midst of the Emerald Gala, or which is a you know kind of several day long event, and we have just finished the first event, the first proper event, the first dance, as it were. It didn't go great for the for the Gold Tree family. <laughs> a real I think, mixed bag. Yeah, it was a mixed bag. You know, it wasn't bad, but it also didn't. It wasn't that kind of great first impression that everyone was kind of hoping for. But the evening has wound down nonetheless. You have been able to mingle a little bit. You were able to to dance, to get to make dramatic eye contact with the appropriate number of people. I I don't think it's our fault that the people in the Regency were not ready for the pop and lock. <laughs> are you are you claiming a Marty McFly defense where your kids yes, are going to love am. this? Yes, I am. The Got kids it. are going to love this. Okay, I, I understand. Please insert that into your canonical interpretations of the event is that the entire Gold Tree Guild were just beatboxing and spinning around on cardboard boxes. But again, the event has wound down. The evening was still a spectacular event filled with all sorts of amazing occurrences and frankly ostentatious demonstrations of the Feathertop family's wealth, power, prestige, and remnants of their kind of magical power. As everyone starts to go back to their residences, which I may remind you, we have canonically described as a miniature neighborhood residing on the Feathertop estate where everyone has individual estate houses <laughs> on their estate. And this estate is also a half-scale model of the Gold Tree estate. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which contains half-sized uh, furniture. Yes, probably. it's very uncomfortable, but it is, you have to admit, quite impressive. Mm-hmm. But one member of your party is slow to turn back to your residence. Sylvester. Yes. During the course of the evening, as you were kind of respectfully keeping your distance, trying to take in the scene, a shadowy stranger caught your eye from across the dance floor. As much as I think I speak for everyone listening and everyone around the table, as much as we wish that it was the first embers of a forbidden romance, you got some different vibes from that, unfortunately. I mean, not to say it's exclusive, but that wasn't the immediate love at first sight kind of hope that we all are hoping for Sylvester. This person, whoever they were, slid out of a side door not too long after you very clearly made contact, but weren't really sneaking out so much as... As if they wanted me to follow them? Perhaps. Hmm. So, while your better judgment may warn you against following, while propriety may warn you against following, something about this, this figure has kind of lit your curiosity. And maybe, maybe your fear, maybe your hope, maybe something else. All of a sudden, through the door, you see this railroad appear. <laughs> That's I the thought, name of the game. Yeah. It's, it's thought, time for the twist. It's yeah. right there. I told I th- you. I all. thought you were going to say like the glint of a crossbow bolt. Mm-mm. You know, it comes through the doorway. What is you that? Forward. Choo-choo. Yeah, it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's called narrative structure, and it's a part of the base game <laughs> that can maybe be purchased on itch.io at some point. <laughs> so I am going to approach Kenjamin and. Basically, uh, step up, give a little bow, and say, I have some butlering duties to perform, my lord. I will join you back at the house shortly. 
I cannot say anything besides dumb jokes right now. Yeah. <laughs> but luring like, is really... What is this butt luring you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> luring butts, you say. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to shut up for the rest of the time. Ken, no, <laughs> Kenjamin <laughs> would say that. Because they're old friends. Yeah. Kenjamin just nods yeah, right. sagely and yeah. says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, David, make dumb jokes. Kenjamin, stoic. <laughs> Kenjamin, it's the end of the dance. No, I, I, Kenjamin I feel, might have had a glass or two of champagne. I, I, I also fun. feel like, like, if anything, Kenjamin would be like, Really? But, but you know, just that look, <laughs> not like not, not necessarily voice it, but just be like, no, nope. okay. <laughs> he said the joke. Yep. <laughs> we all but heard it. Luring. Your, your actions have consequences, David. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I must, um, <clears throat> buttle, sir. Well, see that you do. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. And I will uh, turns I, away chortling. <laughs> he was a little short with him, yeah. but uh, I will I will uh, take a step back, bow, and then turn and make my way towards the door that I saw this shadowy figure go through. Okay. Now, I would like everyone around the table to please roll me a d6, please. This is a roll to determine not just that there is a twist because that is a baked in part of the game because of course there's a complication a twist something happens but now you all as a group are rolling to see if this is a good twist or a bad twist for the gold tree family and how does one determine if it is good oh or bad? i'll tell you oh <laughs> you'll, you'll, so you'll know, know. You'll know. How, how are we supposed to know what we want to roll you want to roll, roll you want to roll high on we this want one. to roll high okay yeah. jonathan with a five okay David with a six. Ooh. Sophie with a three. Steve with a two. Ah, how could you? <laughs> Sylvester, you sneak out the side door, and it doesn't take you particularly long to see the outline of this figure. This, you know, it is a familiar outline only in that you have kind of you saw it across the room, but it is still a little too dark in the, the opulent garden that you find yourself in to truly see exactly who they are. How do you approach? I believe Sylvester's butlering instincts are going to kick in <laughs> and stay towards the towards the doorframe on the side of the walls to stay out of everybody's way and hope that basically his passage goes unnoticed for the most part. Roll me a propriety, uh, either a propriety or we'll say like a grace roll. I would love to roll propriety. Just because... in your your extreme buttle ability are able to just silently sidle up to whoever you want at any time. That's a one, a two, and a four. That is a mixed, mixed failure? failure, unfortunately. Please let the reason be a bird. <laughs> <laughs> over a bird. We're on yeah, the feather top right. estate. It has to be a bird. Uh, as you as you oh, approach, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be like a goose that's protecting its. <laughs> no, like fucking yeah. cassowary. Oh, well, I guess yeah, the right. cassowary would be a critical failure. Yeah, well, <laughs> it depends on how the cassowary acts. I think would be the critical failure. As you approach, kind of the blind spot of this person who you see has lit maybe a cigarette or something, and is just kind of has their back to the party and is seemingly just waiting there without a care. You go to kind of approach them and try, see it again, still trying to figure out who they are, trying to figure out what caught your eye about them in the first place. When a loud squawk comes from the bushes next to you and a large head of a bird swoops in front of your face, eye to eye with you, with a razor sharp beak oh staring you down. Sylvester's eyes just widen and the monocle just falls out and, and starts dangling uh, at his lapel and will then take a step back and maybe avoid eye, direct eye contact. As you are kind of backing off as your your base, no pun intended, lizard brain instincts, you know, kind of kick in for survival, the figure in front of you twirls around dramatically and you can see from seemingly out of nowhere, pulls a cane and then gives this large bird that is just starting to emerge from the bushes a hefty swat on the bird buttock and says, Be gone, Windershins! <laughs> <laughs> and a loud squawk is followed, much less menacing than the first one, as it just kind of canters off as this, again, 
this seven foot tall bird <laughs> just just squawks off and presumably has a hurt little cartoon. But do I recognize the name of the bird as as <laughs> well, I, as as who would give me an indication as to who this is? Like if if it's somebody Ooh. from my past that I knew, mm-hmm. like this is their riding bird, and they've always had this bird. <laughs> it's uh, like the uh, the binders from Devil Wears Prada that they had to memorize for Miranda Priestly. Yeah, <laughs> the, all, the whole guest list. I mean, I was expecting the other guy to just introduce himself. So like, <laughs> you don't even need to ask; I'll just tell you. Well, you would actually not so much that you know from the name of the bird, though. I like the idea. It's the air of command and mastery and familiarity that this person has with the bird. On top of the fact that only you seem to notice this, notice this shadowy figure. But Nathan, what are you wearing? Oh, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. Oh, boy. In the most prototypical but perfectly crafted butler uniform... Crisp, perfect lines, and yet nothing is particularly stand out about his design. No particular embroidery, nothing. Is the head butler for the Feathertop Estate, whose name I have definitely come up with before this exact moment. Shit. Yep. Okay, I got it. It's, <laughs> it's gotta be as, at least as good as Wendershins. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, start with give a, me three seconds, and we'll, we'll give it a C. <clears throat> In front of you is the head butler of the Feathertop Estates, a legendary figure who you, of course, would recognize as Chesterton Jeevesertin. <laughs> 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 who is often called Jeeves. <laughs> he peers at you through his still-in monocle, this older kind of human with a large gray mustache, perfectly coiffed hair, and just absolutely rigid, perfect posture. Looks at you, kind of leans on his cane in a very elegant way, and says, uh, Good evening, Sylvester. Good evening, Master Jeevesertin. It is good to see you once more. You as well, sir. I hope that you enjoyed the evening's festivities. When my duties allowed, I did indeed, sir. A fine answer. He just nods at you as if you have passed a test and that you knew that this was a test all along. <laughs> Sylvester, I, I know that you are busy, as am I, and I wish not to waste either of our time, but I bring you dire tidings. You see, I have always had a soft spot for you, as much, of course, as a, any individual in our station can have such attachments beyond our households. And I have always appreciated that, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And he steps closer to you, and bucking all propriety, he places his hand on your shoulder and looks you dead in the <gasps> eye. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you in the eye, this master, this person who is the platonic ideal of a person in your profession. He looks at you, showing it's impossible, but it seems that he is showing you a bit of of vulnerability. And you can't tell if it is the beautiful torchlight behind you, but it appears that his eye is even welling up as he prepares for what he is about to say to you. And he takes in... A deep breath. Ah! He screams into your face. I would like to. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, did I, I catch you off guard? Yes, that, you Steve? did. <laughs> uh, I would like to maintain a stoic outside, mm-hmm. but internally, Selv's brain breaks through the Sylvester persona 
and immediately starts not really moving his head, but moving his eyes to glance around as to, like, what danger is around us right now. Sylvester, what... What are you... Is there something the matter? I'm sorry, sir. I, I hate to say it, but I was a bit distracted and did not catch what you had said. Uh, I was simply saying, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, god, hey, excuse me, guys, guys, guys! I recognize that, I'm assuming, as Titanius. You know... You have heard those panic <laughs> screams once or thrice before. Maybe not in those exact intonations, but as Selv has also kind of surfaced into your mind simultaneously and you're kind of fighting for this brain space, both Sylvester and Selv are hearing different things. Sylvester is hearing Jeeves say something. You know, can't quite process it because the self part of his brain is distracted by the simultaneous sounds of a very panicked ghostly dwarf. As this kind of parallel conversation is happening almost without your control, as Sylvester and Jeeves are talking, you are able to have a kind of simultaneous side conversation as the scene almost plays out by itself as you and Titanius are talking. So Jeeves and Sylvester are kind of on autopilot. Exactly. And and Selv and Titanius are having an internal dialogue kind of uh, thing. Okay. Yes. Titanius, what's what's the problem? What's going on? Selv, is that you? Is that you? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. I wasn't, I can't really see right now. I found a door and I just kind of pushed my head through through it. I left the desk and it's, I don't like it, but, uh, what's happening? Are you almost done? Um, You're almost done, right? I, you gotta be, right? I, I don't know. We're, we're, we finished dance number one gala. I, I don't know what that means. A third of the way through. About act one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you say there's like, um, can you maybe go faster? Well, I have heard of people doing speed reading or able to read two pages at once, so I suppose um, technically... If, if you could do that, that would be great. Something is is happening out in the void, and as you, you may know, nothing happens in the void. That's like kind of the, the whole thing about it, is that it is a void of nothingness. And I don't, I don't think that's uh, good. How much time do you think we have? Uh, well, and there's just a pause... As, like, you kind of are brought back into the scene, and she's like, and, you know, I would never tell such secrets about uh, a member of my own family, however. Of course, sir. Uh, well, uh, Titanius breaks back in. Um, it's just, I heard, like, a roar. Oh, dear. So, some time, but not, like, a lot of time. So, if you could just stop, um, doing whatever you're doing, and just get the book, and then, you know figure out a way to also free me from my eternal torment. Um, I think that would be really great for everyone involved. Can I hear anything other than Titanius's voice, like background noises or anything? Roll me a check, but using not perception. <laughs> <laughs> D and D character check or uh, roll me, roll me a, a Regency character, a check. Regency character check. And How free spirited! I was going to say it's not a one-to-one. <laughs> uh, one. What about wit? How would you use your wit in this moment? Well, just to to notice things. I feel like and... this would be compassion, where you're understanding the plight of others. Oh, could be. Oh, that's true. All right. Okay. I I will be I like happy that. To, I will be happy to roll compassion. You're trying to see through his heart mm -hmm. into the horrible into the, sounds into of the void. Yes. So that is actually three dice. One, four, and five. A mixed success. So you will not be getting as much information as you could have. You focus your senses. You try to tune out all of the distractions around you, which is essentially multiple conversations, one of them very emotional, one of them very panicked, and try to listen. And you, because of the amount of training that you have done feel confident that you are not just imagining a familiar roar of a worm somewhere in the distance. 
I am on it. Take a deep breath. <gasps> Deeper breath. <gasps> okay, hold it for a moment and then let it out. Oh my god, I just realized I'm a ghost. I don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Titanius. Every relaxation technique I know requires a physical body. Oh. Rest assured, we will get through this as quickly as possible. I will notify the others. And Sylvester is snapped back into the scene as Jeeves wipes a single tear off of his face, ruffles his mustache, and says, Why, I hope you understand the great weight of what I have just told you, and will use this information with propriety. Of course, sir. A burden shared is a burdened lessened. Well said. Well said. And he clicks his cane down onto the cobblestone and without a further word, turns and leaves you. What is the fastest route back to the No, <laughs> no, Steve, you have to do a check to figure out the secret. I need to know. <laughs> I, I am hoping- Use a compassion roll to figure out what was happening with James. <laughs> All right. Um, you can run and think. Sell the sales <laughs> just, All right. Roll I, to remember the gossip. Yeah, yes, I, I'm, try, I, I'm, I'm going to try- I'm going to try- Steve. I, I'm going to try to, as I'm making my way as quickly as proprietary dictates, back to our quarters for the night, I'm going to try to remember what Jeeves has just told me. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that, that kind of buzzing secondary conversation that was happening. Okay. I will allow for compassion. I think that's fine. But I'm going to add a difficulty die to it. Okay. So you can just essentially roll 2d6 instead of 3d6. 2d6. Got it. I'm looking for a critical success. Two fours. No. Oh, oh. That is a mixed failure. You're pretty sure that it was devastating family gossip. It's fine, though. <sighs> Dave. But it was devastating. <laughs> I'm blaming you, the person, and not Sylvester, the right. character. <laughs> my dice, my bad. Sylvester and Selv have never done anything wrong in their whole lives. <laughs> Only Steve. It is just like, of course Self would not remember the hot goss. He'd just be like, "What? I didn't think it was so important." I was like, "Self, no." <laughs> it was. We had we had a a member that is trapped in here that was in trouble. That's what I was listening to, <laughs> and everything else was kind of just low grade buzz. Very nice that you called Titanius a member. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, how would either Sylvester or Self? Because it was never like a full kind of like wall between you, but. Kind of in light of this, like the illusion is a little more opaque now where you're able to kind of be a little more selvy in this moment so as you than you would have previously. The area that Jeeves and I were speaking mm -hmm. in, I kind of imagine that like through a doorway outside into like a little like a tiled area with yep, a small absolutely. balcony and that being maybe two levels above the actual cool, ground. Sick. Hell yeah. Uh, and so... <laughs> For a moment, Sylvester takes over a little bit and I will turn around and make my way back to the doorway and then stop and then just kind of look back at the balcony and seeing that the balcony leads more in a direct line to where I need to go. I'm going to put my hands behind my back and, you know, stand up straight mm -hmm. and make my way to the balcony and just take a quick look around, see if I see anybody. And if I don't, one hand on the balcony and I flip myself over and, <laughs> and down and then start moving as quickly as I can. As soon as I see anybody, I kind of slow to a, and put my hands behind my back and slow to a, a more regal walk. And then as soon as they're out of sight, just sprint again. Yep. <laughs> the only, the only issues you have again are kind of avoiding lookers as well as your, as well as selves unfamiliarity of sprinting in tuxedo shoes, which everyone knows are miserable to move around in. Yes. Uh, and, and no traction. Yeah, exactly. You sliding everywhere. And now a word from our sponsor. Hey everyone, Jonathan here with the mid-roll. 
If you're looking for the hottest frog memes around, join the Reckless Attack community on Discord. You can find a link to it in the show notes of our latest episodes or on our website, recklessattack.com. Want to support the show? Tell a friend or check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash recklessattack where you can get access to our behind-the-screen talkback show, as well as our new Reckless of Snacks series, where we eat snacks, hang out, and just talk about whatever's on our mind. Thanks so much for listening to us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Where do we find the rest of the Gold Tree family in this moment? Again, it has not been particularly long, and then Sel- and then Sylvester sprinted to get up to you. So probably you guys haven't even been here all that particularly long. You might be decompressing. You might be doing whatever. As soon as Sylvester gets to our quarters, Charity is going to call out, Sylvester, where have you been? I need help with tomorrow's half. (laughs) And it has been probably a 45 second delay. Yeah, that's probably not actually true. But yeah, (laughs) but I've gotten the hats kind of more or less laid out. But I need someone to hold them up for me so I can see how they look before I try them on. Obviously. And I'm going to call Sylvester out on this. Where where have you been? (laughs) So I think right now, Selv slash Sylvester is more in Selv mode than he is in Sylvester mode. And so as he's coming in, he doesn't stop moving, but he does yell out, Checkers, Val, Cass, main room, now. Who is this Cascarin you talk <laughs> of? <laughs> As Kenjamin Goldtree regally walks into the living room. I'm this imagining... Is, I feel like Kenjamin is like Cass's ultimate state. Dad form? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, no, again, I, I'm imagining Kenjamin has the same shit-eating grin that David yeah. the human has <laughs> in this moment. What Slash this Cass ruckus. grin has also this shit-eating grin where he's like, oh, I don't know what you mean, yeah. good sir. <laughs> I am your master. How dare you speak to me in such a manner? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I feel like Violet slash Val is like, um, one moment as she is trying to by herself get out of a dress made of sextants, <laughs> the nautical yep. navigation equipment. Good clarifier. And you know, it's really a two person job. She thought she could do it by herself and it's taken a minute. Again, she's trying to be a strong, independent Regency woman. We exactly. talked about that up top. Sylvester, what's all of this nonsense? What's all of this ruckus about? At this point, you hear Violet fall over. And she- <laughs> <laughs> Titanius contacted me through Jeeves, the butler at the Feathertop Estate. Jeeveserton? <laughs> he talked to you? Yes, but that's not the... I think you're missing the, the main point here. <laughs> this Titanius. Is, this is a time where I wish we had video because Steve's hand gestures <laughs> to be like, just like almost shaking. <laughs> yeah. to be like, look, focus, no, please. You're trying to shake David out of this. <laughs> and you can see Kenjamin's eyes like fog over yeah. for a little bit. And then like suddenly they like dilate. And like, it looks like Kenjamin slash now Kaskrin sees you in a new light. And it's like, self? Self, what are you talking about? Titanius is here? No, he he spoke through the butler, Jeeves. He stuck his head through the doorway to contact us. There's a problem. What problem could there possibly be at the Featherton Estate? Everything is perfect. Wait, wait, no. (laughs) (laughs) So, what, are we out of time? Uh, Quickly approaching, yes. There's something in the void that's trying to get through. I think it's the bookworm. We need to speed this up. We need to get to the end of this, um, novel and get it to conclude so that we can get the book and get out of here as quickly as possible. That's right, Sylvester. We just need to get Violet and Quincy together so they kiss. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I think you broke Nathan. And I just had a mouthful of water, and I was determined I'm not fucking my iPad, the microphone, or my 15 post-it notes or note cards that I have saloon everywhere. This is too important. And it did make me laugh, but not enough to ruin all of that. And that's how we get to the end of the book, right? And actually, at that point, I'm imagining all of us. It has Val is on the ground in her room, just rolling Violet. around. You can <laughs> hear just like a like a toddler. She's like, Don't worry, I got it. I got it. Sylvester slash Selv will then kind of do a slow turn and look to Cass, and kind of give like a, a shrug. And Cass grin like 
now sees the situation with clear focus and it's like, Self, go help Val. Like, go help her with the dress. I'll be right back. And yes, sir. And- I mean, up the- <laughs> and, and uh, Self will, uh, I will kind of like run and, and boink, boink, boink up the stairs as, as quickly as I can. She's got like one arm fully stuck, like inside. So it only has one usable arm. It's like, what? How did this work? It's, it's not sticky through the <laughs> armhole either. It is from somewhere else. <laughs> Charity, as you are looking through your hats, mm-hmm. you hear the sounds of Kenjamin in his study, just throwing books to the ground, <laughs> looking for something frantically. Mr. Goldtree, what are you doing up here? Checkers, checkers, I found it. This is a perfect recreation of the Goldtree Manor. They got the books and everything. And he runs out with kind of this like small paperback novel and begins frantically flipping through it. You see on the cover of this kind of trashy book is the title, A Time for Terrigan. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. How how dog-eared is this? Like, uh, pretty, how, is, pretty. What's the spine condition? Pretty bad, I assume. Yeah, there's a lot of creases in yep. it. Yeah. How, what state of undress is the Fabio on the cover of this book? <laughs> oh, absolutely naked. Like, yeah. Like, it's, shirtless. It's un- yeah, shirtless with like the sunset in the background and the Taste but tastefully cut. Yes. Yeah, tasteful, yes. tastefully cut off. Like if the mm-hmm. cover extended one more inch lower, mm-hmm. then ah. you'd see everything. Mm-hmm. But this is a classy podcast. And he says, right here, right here, I think. I think I know how we can get out of this. And he's like flipping through about midway through this book. And then you hear from upstairs. No, no, put your arm here and twist counterclockwise. Self, I can't move that arm. (laughs) This is the worst. Bide a moment. And Self will then run back downstairs into the kitchen and then run back upstairs holding a large kitchen knife. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, I have weapon proficiency. (laughs) Casquin goes to the table with all the hats and just violently swoops them all <laughs> off the table. Yes. <laughs> and like sets the book down. I love that Checkers has not appeared but this is still no. a whole charity. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's like Charity and Checkers would both scream. Yeah. yeah my hat. Hat. I, I'm wondering if you're hearing two voices at <laughs> once coming from one mouth. I've decided that Checkers is having too much fun yep. playing Charity Goldtree and is just refusing to come out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. Sounds perfect. And Kaskrin, like, beckons, like, my dear, my dear, come over here. <laughs> you have a lot of explaining to do after you ruin my hats. Yes, yes, I'm going to get dressed for tomorrow. Oh. There won't be a tomorrow if we don't get out of this. Checkers! Slash charity. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here. What are you talking this about? This is going to fuel a lot of fanfics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, for one, I'm pretty interested in that. It's at that point you hear a loud clattering as if a lot of sextants have just hit the yeah, ground. Like shingles falling <laughs> yes, off the roof. Yes, yes. It's like... <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> you see, I think I know where we are in the story. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not one-to-one, but in A Time for Terrigan, the main character finds himself the morning after the ball in deep contemplation. And he is out by himself, by his lonesome in the garden. And I think if we can get Val there with Quincy by himself, hold on, hear me out, maybe they can kiss. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying, Kenjamin. We just have to get Violet and Quincy alone in the garden terrace together. And I think I know exactly where he's going to be. And he like flips a few more pages in this book and says, if we can get them to kiss in Act 1, we can skip all of Act 2 and go straight to the ending. At this point, Violet slash Val comes downstairs and is like, oh my god, how do they do that? that thank you again, so, whew. Glad I could help, but um, we have some issues. And I will quickly explain on the way down the stairs to Val what Titanius had told me so that we can get her caught up so that we can all get into the room together and and discuss. And Catherine says, Val, go get that dress back on. You need to woo Quincy. <laughs> First of all, what? Never. And then second, wait, I have to what? We don't have time for this. We need to finish the story. We don't have time. We need you to woo. We need yeah. you to woo. <laughs> woo faster. No Charity, tell woo her. Faster. You heard what your father said. <laughs> <laughs> woo, like your life depends on it. 
I think Val is like, again, coming out from being violent and is now just like, I don't know what's happening, but I I do find this a bit hilarious. <laughs> but this is good, actually. This is fantastic. This is kind of, kind of fun because she's like, just like kind of slightly panicking at the news from Titanius. It's like, but we're fine, right? Because it's in a romance genre that has to have happy. <laughs> <laughs> and Kaskin will kind of like get everyone around the table and like show him like kind of his immediate plan where mm. we use the book, we use the genre against itself. If we can get someone in front of Quincy, the main love interest, a little early, that's going to let us hop over a couple of dances. And so he's like looking at Sel, looking at Charity, looking at Val. Is there anything in there about some kind of family scandal with the feather tops that Jeeves would know about the butler? Uh, scandal from the butler? Not in this one. Hold on. And Kenjamin <laughs> Kaskarin is going to run back in the study, grab another book, and he's going to kind of like slam another one on the table. This one a little bit more robust. And he says, well, in this book, The Ginger Prince... The family comes upon some hard times, but nobody else seems to know except for the butler who reveals this information. Well, for that one, the oldest son is supposed to marry the rich heiress, but goes for a love match. And the youngest sister actually marries the new money that everyone had a problem with until they got married and then got the money back. You read The Ginger Prince too? I did my research for all books. That were on Lorana's list, thank you. And I thought it would be prudent to read corresponding novels of the same romantic universe. Thank you. But wait, what do you think about the relationship between Tracy and... Yes. Oh, <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> do you have any idea how long I've been waiting to talk about this with someone else? So you're saying that the plan is... For me to woo Quincy. Yes, tomorrow, tomorrow at dawn, when he's by his lonesome in the garden. I am obsessed that you keep using the word lonesome. Yeah. <laughs> by his lonesome is like, ooh, very good. It makes me very happy. But you can't possibly go dressed like that, Violet. And we're going to be ready by tomorrow. We got to get you upstairs right now. Please, no. <laughs> Val, listen to your mother. <laughs> Check her to <down> my mom. <laughs> shoo, shoo, shoo. Up, up, up. Gosh, what do I say to woo him? I'll mark you some passages, Val, for inspiration, but this has to be real. It has to come from the heart. It's a romance novel. Make it romantic. That's right. Make it romantic. Do you have something to add, Self? Uh, actually, at, <laughs> yes, at this point... Yes, make it romantic. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> By uh, his own self. Uh, actually, <laughs> Self is not going to say anything to that. What I am going to do is slightly hang my head in like a little bit of like resignation and just say... I will lay out the dresses for your selection. <laughs> and then I will go and grab, because I know it's going to come up, I'm going to go grab as many hats as I can. <laughs> and cue the, like... Rom-com, rom-com dress up me- montage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just trying on everything, fancy jaunty music. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then, of course, with checkers being like, now this one, now this one, now go back to that one. Now go back mm-hmm. to this other one. Now these new ones. Now go back to this, you know. And Kenjamin Kaskarin shouting out, like, great love quotes from yeah. all of his yeah. favorite <laughs> romance novels. And Val and Selv just being resigned to their fates. But then Val's like, oh, wait, wait, I'm kind of into this. This is kind of fun. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> romance is oh. the spice of life. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> that's the serious yeah, title phrase. yeah I mean <laughs> so to take a step back here for a moment both for, for us at the table and for those listening that's right usually when playing this game there would be a again a twist a complication as per the genre right there would be a secret cousin that has been unveiled or an inheritance that has been alluded to or an old friend from the war back with a dark secret and a problem that needs fixing for us we've decided that the twist is dungeons and dragons (laughs) (laughs) but the reason i kind of uh level set that both for for our listeners uh, just so that they know what might be happening and also know that this is not should i ever publish the base game not how the base (laughs) game would normally function in its kind of straightforward way i mean it can i don't know do whatever you want is to kind of reassert the goal 
of this game is no longer make the love match or really more specifically become the emerald of the season. Now it is complete the narrative as soon as possible. Just to clarify, for you guys, your goal, if you only have one, is it to at least plan A to woo Quincy Feathertop? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, we're still we're, doing that. We're, well, I think we're pulling out, we're shooting the big gun first, having Violet go like wooing early, wooing early, and big then go dramatic there. feeling speech. And see what happens. <laughs> and, and also keeping in mind, the, the main goal is to get the book we need. And Precisely. And if we can get the match and that gets us the book, that's, that's the plan. Exactly. Again, the meta goal is to get the book and get out of there. But the way to do that, presumably, is to complete the story. You all spend, probably you guys are up for a while trying stuff on, and it was a late night, you know, this was a party. Mm -hmm. So if you guys got any sleep at all, it was limited. And for Val slash Violet, your sleep was in the confines of a large dress. (laughs) So not the most restful. It's like one of those, you know, old movie, like C-3PO had to stand up to rest in costume. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you, yeah, you're just, you're just like propped up. Yeah. And <laughs> can't put my arms down. Violet slash Val would have chosen a dress that had good range of movement. That makes after sense. After the sextant debacle. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. And suffice it to say, throughout the night, your preparations are a little more complicated than simply just ensuring that Val slash Violet is wearing kind of the best dress or, you know, has just a a bunch of quotes to come up with, whatever. You all toil for hours. You do whatever it is that your individual characters do to kind of set the scene or equip Violet with whatever tools that she needs to make this the spectacular life-changing, love-making, ew. (laughs) Not, no, no, not that. Love-matching event that you hope it will be so you can get the fuck out of here. But we'll go into that in a moment. For the next morning comes. Sophie, what's the ideal setting for for this moment? Because... I'll let you choose, not just because it's fun, but because now that you all are kind of aware, extra aware, of that kind of genre magic that's Mm -hmm. kind of behind all of this, you can kind of set intentions a little bit where Kaskrin was like, oh, I want to find this book. And, oh, it is a one-to-one recreation, and this book is here. And somehow you did, in fact, pack... 45 different dresses Mm -hmm. (laughs) for a seven day long event or whatever that the rules are plot convenient so please describe the morning my first inclination is that there's fog heavy morning dew rests on the many garden estates that are on the Feathertop property. It's almost all, like, proportionally is mostly garden estate. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. nonsense. Violet is walking up. She's making her way through this almost like pantheon structure that leads to a formal garden. And there are winding paths, hedge mazes of various heights. And she sees Quincy. He's standing at this ornate railing that is overlooking like a lower part of the garden. 
and looks like his morning reading, the book he can normally focus on, is sitting there. But he seems to have discarded it and is now looking out and seems focused on some thought or something. Violet approaches and doesn't try to hide her steps, you know, not trying to scare him or surprise him in this morning. But she will come to the center of this balcony and as Quincy turns to face her, she smiles as she sees his face and begins with Quincy, forgive my intrusion and forwardness, but I can no longer play these gala games without telling you how ardently I admire and love you. We grew together as friends, and I know I hurt you in the past. If time were at my command, I would change our fates. The truth of my heart is that I love you, Quincy. I never wish to be parted from you. Your wit and mind challenge my own, which drives me mad. But I find I crave the banter when you are absent. If you feel the same about me, I will spend our future telling you the ways in which you entrap my heart. If you do not, I will withdraw and be of service for you to find your happiness. He lowers the spectacles on his face, lip quivering as he turns to take in all that you've said, take you in, take in the setting. He takes in a small breath, and he says, We'll see you next week. (laughs) 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 Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) I guess that's... Sometimes my my notes take me a second, and I I just have high slow regal pomp. Yes, uh, have some discussion along the way. Why do you Jocelyn Fitzhugh's, <laughs> and then in parentheses perfectly. Yes, that was yeah. That, and then, that was your joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then immediately after that, soup fork. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also a good joke. Yeah. Also a good. A, that was a good episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good show. It's a yeah. good show.